Uh, why, hello everyone. Welcome back to study number seven here for Breathing the Psalms. And uh, glad you've tuned in. You made it this far. And uh, I had a few people say they started off doing the first two or three, but then kind of got out of the groove of it, but want to watch them later. The great thing is these are all going to be kept uh, on our YouTube channel. So uh, you'll be able to watch them at any point in time if they, uh, they're helping you. And uh, I know that I'm enjoying getting into the Psalms and learning all kinds of wonderful truths that come from God's Word there. It's, uh, the Psalter is just, it's full of life, uh, so much life-giving uh, truth that comes for you and me, and, and so I hope it, it helps you. Yeah, so we come here today, and um, if you don't know me, or if this is the first one you, you tuned into, I'm Pastor Rob here at Windsor Baptist Church, and uh, we the past few weeks, we've been going through the different types of Psalms, the different types of Psalms, so uh, we talked about how some psalms are prayers for help. Uh, some psalms are psalms of trust. Uh, some are hymns of praise. And this week, uh, this week we're going to spend some time uh, looking at one psalm in particular. Uh, it's a type of psalm that comes in the Psalter. It's called a, a song of thanksgiving. A song of, of thanksgiving. And uh, so these types of psalms these songs of thanksgiving, they're a praise to God, uh, but slightly different because what's happening in that psalm is that uh, the psalmist is being reminded of something that God has done, uh, a crisis that God delivered them from, and specifically giving thanks for it. And out of that comes the praise. So it's not just praising God for, for who he is and his characteristics. It's something has happened uh, to the psalmist or to the community, and specifically praising God and thanking Him uh, for for helping them uh, through that crisis. And so, yeah, we're going to get into that uh, today, and uh, all kinds of cool stuff will come out of it to help us in our walk with Jesus. But I always like to start off with with a word of prayer, and so let's take a few moments and just just pray together. Uh, Lord, I thank you that we can come here, uh, worship you online, learn more about you from your word. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes, our ears, uh, and our hearts to the truth that is found in your word. Lord, please speak to us. Give us uh, refreshment for the journey as we come to you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So, yeah. So, um, right. Uh, you might be wondering, hey, Rob, where are you? Well, I, I am at the church. I'm actually in the nursery right now with, uh, there's no other babies aside from me. Uh, so we have something happening uh, here this afternoon. The sanctuary just got cleaned and uh, the weather is, hasn't been very cooperative for me. It, it gets really hard to film outside with the background noise and, uh, and just moisture level with, with the technology. So, uh, I'm learning how to, all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, so I'm, I'm in here in the nursery in the church, if you wonder where I'm at, at uh, 219 Pizan. So, um, no, I, I want to just, um, these particular types of psalms, these songs of thanksgiving, they have certain characteristics about them. And uh, uh, one of them is that there's a, a, at the start of the psalm, there's this call for praise where, the psalmist calls to, to, to praise the Lord. And then what you have at some place in the psalm, you have some sort of recollection of a past crisis uh, or a past prayer for help that the psalmist is uh, reminding himself about and, and telling us about uh, that results in the praise. And then, and then out of God's uh, answer to that prayer, that spirit of thanksgiving, uh, there's this renewed call to praise that tries to include like everybody from the worshiping community say, look, look at what God has done. Let's praise the Lord together. And so uh, they're beautiful psalms and it, kind of encouraging too because what, it, ba what they basically are, they're testimonies. And I love a good testimony and I know you love a good testimony too. And uh, it, it, it's just so important that we, that we share our stories of what God has done for us, what God has done for you, what God has done for me. And in that sense, we, you know, we count our blessings. We count our blessings. We remind each other 
of all the blessings from God and what he's done for us and how we can be so thankful uh, because of what he's done. And so I, I want to start off with, this is a classic hymn uh, that I uh, often like to sing it at uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, I, know, I know you know, but we're going to uh, let's listen to this hymn, Count Your Blessings, Name Them One by One. That's a lovely hymn. I know you, I'm sure you would appreciate that. If you haven't heard that one before, it's really easy to remember, right? Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Just always have that mindset where you're looking back and you're counting the blessings and what God has done for you, that, that spirit of thanksgiving that uh, we all need to keep in our hearts and minds. So I, wanna, I want to um, spend a bit of time during this session on Psalm 34. Psalm 34. And this, this would have, uh, you'll see it in the introduction. It's a psalm of when, when David pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away uh, and left. That's sort of, that's the, the backdrop there. And um, so, so, yeah, we're going to uh, get into it here. Uh, verse 1, starting off verse 1, and uh, I have the words beside me here. Here's the psalm. I will extol the Lord at all times. 
His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. Beautiful verse. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. A beautiful passage of Scripture. Right, so here we go, friends. It's going a little bit uh, deeper here into Psalm 34. A song of thanksgiving. And, and so you'll see uh, in the first verse, the very first verse there, David writes, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. And so there you have David as an individual, like praising the Lord. That's, that's, that's typically how they start off. Uh, and then in verse 3, you'll see verse 3. It says, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name Together. And by the way, if you don't have a Bible, uh, press pause, go get one. I'm just slowly going to be working my way through the psalm here. But um, anyhow, verse 3, Psalm, psalm 30, 34, right? There's that call for the whole assembly to, to glorify the Lord with David and let us exalt his name uh, together. And, you know, sometimes God will use one person, uh, answer a prayer for one person to encourage an entire community of faith. Just so important to share your story when good things happen. Oftentimes that's all we hear is the bad stuff. But when God does a good thing, even I do remember this, you know, to communicate that to other people. It's just, it's so easy to miss his miracles or you notice them but you don't make a, a big deal about it. And, and, and for a lot of us, we just need to hear those good things every now and again to remind us and to keep us keep us going. So, so that, that's common with these kind of psalms. There's this, this call for the community to worship the Lord together because of what he did for, uh, for David here. Then in verses uh, 4 to 6, 4 to 6, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Right? So 
recalling a specific time here where the Lord answered uh, his prayers. Those who look to him are radiant, their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of his trouble. So again, that's that's recalling this time where David needed help and and God God helped him, right? Right there in those those verses. And then what starts to happen that's unique to Psalm 34, it's kind of why I wanted to use it uh, today for the study, uh, from yeah, 17 all the way basically down to the end of the, the psalm, is uh, there's a testimony of what God has done, but with, with some instruction, like teaching and helping us to walk with God. As somebody who's been through a difficult time, uh, we can learn and walk with God learning from him as well. So in that sense, it's kind of a teaching psalm. We're going to get into a little bit of that more next week because some of the psalms are instructional by nature. They teach us and guide us in our, in our walk with God. Um, but I want to use it, this psalm this morning, because not only is it, is it a song of thanksgiving, but it teaches us how to walk through a crisis, it's, which is a good question. And how do you get through a crisis. I mean, how do, you, how do you go through a hard time or a difficult situation? And, and we have some things that we can learn from in the psalm as it instructs us, as we have that, that spirit of thanksgiving and, uh, and praise the Lord. Well, I mean, accor according to the Bible and, and this psalm, this is a theme throughout Scripture, you want to get through a crisis, it all starts with God. It, just, it all starts with God with coming to God and remembering some of the important truths about him that act like a compass for your life. All right, so sometimes we, we believe certain lies about God that aren't true. They influence us in a certain way and we're not as thankful anymore. Uh, but I just want to highlight, uh, well, four big ones that come, come from the psalm here to walk through a crisis. I mean, the big thing is God, but uh, so, so the first one I would point out is, it comes in verse eight. It says, uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. So God is good. God is good. And there's a whole world out there, and, and many people that don't believe that, because they'll look at evil or bad decisions people will make or natural disasters and so on and so forth, and things that are really hard to explain to begin with, and suggest, well, if there is a God, he's not very good. And that's a lie. God is good. Uh, the creation that he made is a, is, is a good creation, and, and you included, me included. God is good, so whatever you're going through, you want to help yourself. Oftentimes, going through crisis is more of a mental, emotional struggle more than anything else. Just remember that, that God reveals himself to you and me as somebody who is good. Romans uh, 8.28 says, For we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. There's one catch with that verse that's really important, and I've seen it get misapplied by people. Um, there are consequences to, to our decisions and the things that we do and the, and the evil in this world. God working for the good in all things are for those who love him. They're for the... Uh, it's a promise for those who love him, who follow Jesus. So if you're trying to follow the Lord, God will work all things for your good and my good. But if you're not, right? I mean, verse 21 here in the Psalms says, um, evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned, right? God is a God of justice. And, and in that is goodness because it was evil. But, but just know, as, as a follower who's trying to love God, and if you haven't or you haven't placed your faith in Jesus, that's where it all starts. That goes back to my first study, uh, second study, actually. It, 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 the Psalms, they point to Christ. 
as the, as the coming king. And so you, it all starts with coming to Jesus. And from that, you can breathe the Psalms and, and learn how to pray again. And in this sense, we talk, you know, today is, is, it's about praying with the spirit of thanksgiving for what God has done for you and for me. God is good and God has been good to you. I mean, wouldn't you have to admit that? He just, he is a good God. And so, and so praise the Lord for that. All right, so the second thing here to, to help you get through a crisis, as, as we learn from, from David and, and his testimony of, God's, of God, not only is God good, but God is near. God is near. Verse 18, verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Fascinating verse. The idea there is that the Lord is close, that the Lord is near. And not just to anybody. But there's somebody who's brokenhearted and just and just like crushed in spirit. And you know, it doesn't take long walking in this world. I mean, your heart's gonna break. You're gonna have major disappointments come your way that that like how do I get through it? Well, remember that the Lord is near. This is David's testimony. And so you can give thanks that not only is he good, and has a way of working out the stuff out but he's he's near right he's near you and 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 sometimes life just it runs over you like a bus and you get crushed it just whether it was your accident or or not it could be a job situation but it you know he he's he's near in those times uh, in those times of, of deep deep sorrow and brokenness god god is near jesus said uh before uh uh, after, just before he he left and went uh, ascended to the to the right hand of the Father, he said, "And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age." And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That 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 my understanding there. This gets funny with end time stuff, uh, but serious on the last is that 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 refers to his his eventual return. That's the end of the age when he when he comes back. Uh, so, but he's he's with us. Through the, this whole church age, so to speak, he, he he's given us his, his Holy Spirit, and and he he walks with us. He's he's very near. The Lord is near. Uh, Romans eight thirty eight. Give you another one from Romans, beautiful book of the Bible. Paul wrote, "For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers." Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's the love of God that keeps us connected with Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us uh, from God's love. He's near. And not just near as in like somebody stalking you or a creep, uh, but in a loving, fatherly, caring, forgiving, helping, sustaining kind of way. And so, and so that, boy, that'll help you cope through a difficult time. That's David's testimony here. The Lord is near uh, to the brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit. And so if that's you, God, uh, God loves to show up in those times. God is good. God is near. And uh, just a third thing here that I want to highlight, you know, coping through a difficult time, is that God delivers. God delivers. <clears throat> Verse 17, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. He, he delivers them from all their troubles, right? So God God is a God who is responsive to prayers. He does respond to prayers. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Uh, sometimes he says wait. But in all of those uh, ways of responding, he is still responding. And, uh, and here we're told that, again, the righteous cry out, 
Uh, so uh, as if you'd apply that, those who are following Jesus, who believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, you know, the incarnate Christ who came, came to the earth, he hears their prayers and he delivers them from all their troubles. Right? He works for the good of, uh, in all things for those who, who love him. God is a God who delivers. And, and you, know, you think back, not only for David here in, this, in his particular situation uh, that he was facing with, uh, with Abimelech, but, but um, God delivered the Israelites. Uh, God delivered David many times. I mean, God, uh, God delivered uh, Paul from prison and, and uh, you know, uh, martyred him a number of times before he eventually was. That's, that's our understanding. And, uh, and God delivers everyone who comes to faith in Jesus Christ. It, 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 the message of the cross, the gospel, is a message of full-on deliverance. Of, that's what the word salvation means, to save, to be delivered from you know, God's wrath and, 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 and condemnation of sin and, and, and death and, and, and brokenness and Ill, illness even. I mean, that comes up in the New Testament as well. I mean, God, God is God who saves and who... Who delivers? Overall, this is the last kind of the, the fourth thing I wanted to kind of to highlight to help coping through a, a crisis and as given David's testimony. And it's this, that, that God is bigger than what you're facing. God is bigger than what you're facing. So I'm picking up here from verse 9, that idea. It says here in verse 9, Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. Those who fear him lack nothing. So it's that, it's that fear of the Lord. And one of the things that, that, that I was taught uh, about the Old Testament and Hebrew, the use of the word fear, is, is this, it's a sense of reverence and awe. That God is, and as you get close to Him, right? He's a holy God, right? There's this, this. He's bigger than us. So there's, there's this, this, this. What they call fear, translated in English, but this, this sense of reverence for God, and and in that, that He's bigger than anything that could ever happen, you know, in this, in this world. And so whatever you're going through, it's not too big for God. So not only is He good, if you come, if you come to Jesus, He'll work things out for your good. Not only is He is he near, like he's with you the whole time with everything happening? Uh, and not only does he have the power to deliver you, uh, but but he's bigger than everything you're facing. And and I don't know, that that just helps me, whatever comes my way, and, and, and as of late there's been a few weird little things happening, but God's just he's good and and and, and he's bigger than, than than the stuff we get going on in our lives. I want us to hear. Here's the words of David uh, when he stood up to Goliath in 1 Samuel uh, 17. So God, Goliath is one of the Philistines, and they, they were always um, at war with, with the Israelites. And Goliath was a, this, this huge dude that they brought out and was taunting the, the Israelite army to come and get someone to fight him. And... Uh, uh, nobody would. They were all scared because he was ginormous. Except for one, uh, one young shepherd boy named David who was just ready to, ready to roll with him uh, because of his, uh, his belief in God. And uh, 1 Samuel 17, verses 45 to 47, here's what David said before he, before he took him out um, uh, with a, a smooth stone and, and a sling. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, 
and he will give all of you into our hands. So no fear. He need not fear Goliath. His fear is in the Lord, as, as he writes in Psalm 34, because God can do anything. The battle belongs to the Lord. So some of the stuff that we face is bigger than us. And we need a power bigger than us to face that battle, and God is that power. So go to him in prayer. Uh, ask him for help. And I did a whole study on that a couple weeks back, just asking God uh, for help. But here specifically in this study, be reminded that God delivered David multiple times, I'm using the reference here to, to Goliath too, as a testimony for, for you and me to give thanks. And he's the same God who's with you and can help you right now. And so just, I mean, how do you get through a crisis? Well, a couple things that come out of the psalm, I mean, you could look at it from a, a uh, psychological point of view, but just just theologically, I mean, please know that God is good, that God is near, that God has the power to deliver, and that God is bigger than anything that you're facing. And as you do that, I think you and I, like David, can look back on our lives and think, you know what? God has done a lot for me. I can count my blessings. I can think of how he's answered so many prayers, and that, that that'll keep you going. Sometimes we forget those things. We need to share our stories and hear other people's stories uh, to be uh, encouraged in the faith and to keep keep going and to keep to keep praying and to keep coming to God uh, and asking him for help and when he does help uh, to give him the thanks for it so uh, Lord I, I or folks I, pr I pray that this this coming week as you continue to read through the Psalms that uh, you take some time to remember the last time God delivered you one of the things that comes up through the whole Old Testament is the Jewish people are always being reminded of their deliverance from Egypt, that God did deliver them. So remind yourself of the last time God delivered you or did something big in your life. Don't forget that. He's the same God today. And I pray that that encourages you, that you would count your blessings, that you would name them one by one, and remember what the Lord has done. And may God bless you and keep you and look forward to seeing you again next week. Who knows what room I'll be in. Maybe I'll be back in the nursery with my soother. <laughs> God bless. See you.